TV presenters are often trained to present in a neutral, unemotional way. In adapting to social media, 10 Tampa Bay is learning to experiment with their tone and push outside of a typical broadcast mindset. Hey, I'm Asante Bean with the Pointer Institute. Through our year-long VidSpark program, we worked with three local newsrooms to create social media videos for Gen Z audiences. One of those newsrooms was 10 Tampa Bay, a broadcast TV station in Tampa Bay, Florida. We have an audience on TV that is aging, and they are aging out of news, and we need to be focused on how we bring in the next generation of news consumers, or else we simply aren't going to have jobs. So trying to find that audience where they are is sort of been a primary goal for myself and the entire team that I work with. On broadcast, we are limited by our DMA, how far our antenna goes out. But with digital, we are national, international correspondents, international content. 10 Tampa Bay posted a lot of videos on their YouTube channel, but most of their content wasn't specifically made to be viewed on social media. The social first content they did have was buried in the volume of videos on their channel. Most of their focus was on other social platforms. Our initial social first video strategy when this project started was very heavily focused on Facebook. It's an older audience, so we run into the same problem we run into on TV, in that eventually that audience isn't going to be there anymore. Initially, their plan for VidSpark was to shoot an in-person series digging into questions and curiosities about Tampa Bay. But just as the team began shooting, COVID-19 changed those plans. I think we all just kind of were on hold and in shock for about a month, right? Where I know at least for our station, we were just trying to keep up with all the developments with the pandemic. And I think what we realized in the moment was people were really frightened. People like just wanted some basic information and to feel like everything was gonna be okay. And so as we talked about what it might look like, we thought the biggest thing we could fill was this information void. So what we ultimately ended up doing was bringing in investigative reporter Jenna Bourne, who was never associated with the project before. And together we were able to create a series that we, we refer to uh, online as a homemade deep dive into the coronavirus pandemic. Jenna stepped in to start the What's Brewing series. Not only was she the host, she was also the reporter, the camerawoman, and the editor. One of her biggest challenges was adjusting her presentation style from broadcast host to YouTube host. I've been a TV reporter for nine years, and in those nine years, you learn to do things a certain way, and you learn to tell stories a certain way, and things look a certain way, graphics look a certain way, you talk a certain way um, on camera, and being able to um, say, okay, that's how we've always done it, but that's not how we're gonna do it anymore. That was the biggest challenge. And the fun part about this project for me has been watching how much she's loosened up and how she's kept her intensity and care for the journalism while also delivering it in a way that's been accessible to the audience. Her voice, the way she looks at the camera, the way that the graphics look, all have morphed into, this is the way people want the content consumed. They wanna be able to sit in a restaurant with you, hang out at a bar with you, and tell stories with you, and have you tell stories. This format really allowed me to actually show some of my, of my personality. Um, and use some humor and actually make facial expressions, which is so much more how I actually talk. Um, and so I think it comes across a lot more. This is the first time I'm, I'm watching myself on camera and finally feeling like I see me. At first, Jenna's stories focused on the ways the pandemic was affecting teens and young adults. One of my favorites is the school pandemics plans episode um, because we were able to call out just a total lack of consistency when it came to plans for schools. Mr. Corcoran, don't you think that the public has a right to know about their plans for schools? Mr. Corcoran, you're not going to answer our questions? I answer all your questions. Every single time I always answer your question. Then why are you driving away, sir? And what's Brewing also evolved with the news cycle. After the death of George Floyd, the team produced episodes on policing in Florida and black history curriculums in schools. Some law enforcement agencies are responding to calls for reform by pledging to increase bias training. But one big question remains unanswered. Does bias training actually work? Over time, Jenna combined her work on what's brewing with her other responsibilities as a reporter. Usually a reporter will come with a story that's maybe a minute, minute 15, but with investigative, their stories will run five, six minutes on broadcast, 
and there'll be eight to 10 minutes left on the cutting room floor. So we started to rethink that whole process, be like, wait a minute, what if we go, what's brewing first? And then from that, tell a broadcast story. These days, I rarely do a story that's not, doesn't turn into a What's Brewing episode. And I, I think that's great. I mean, if you're going to put the resources into, into doing a story, why not get as much out of it as you can? Once their YouTube series was up and running, the team turned their attention to TikTok. They saw the potential in TikTok to be a place where teens go for information, not just entertainment and humor. What I'm realizing with TikTok is we're talking about really, really, really smart kids who are getting in front of an electoral map and explaining something to their friends about how the electoral college works. If there's an appetite for that, this is a perfect place for us to be the adults in the room and help put out information that this audience is going to be seeking to begin with, but that it really could do a service. The team wanted a big personality to lead the project, so they went with their morning anchor Jabari Thomas, who has a background in entertainment. So we've seen these in movies, right? But they're not just for show. Let me explain what these do. The producers and Jabari realized that their most interesting TikToks were ones that focused on Jabari's main interests, like the film industry. And they saw that because Jabari had to film himself while working remotely, and because TikTok requires all footage for a post to be shot on the phone that uploads it, the hosts are also the producers on TikTok. So now they're having producers that were behind the scenes come on camera and make posts that speak to their interests. Having someone pitch what they want to do specifically for that personality, whether it's me, whether it's Tamika, Jabari, David, um, and you know, like finding something that's true to them so they have their own vision. 10 Tampa Bay is continuing both on TikTok and with what's brewing on YouTube. They're moving forward with an emphasis on authenticity, creative collaboration, and breaking the norms of broadcast production. Watching a YouTube vlogger or an Instagram influencer, if it feels forced or fake, I don't want to watch it. Most people don't. But if you see like a real personality and a person's like true colors come out and something they're passionate about and you still learn something or you've had emotion evoked or um, you know it's just something that educated you to some extent then you're more likely to tune back in and to follow them. This has shown us that you know somebody who's just started in the business but they've had a device in their hand since they grew up now um, they're the experts. You take this young journalist and this older journalists and they come together and create this content. So that's one thing that we are definitely pushing forward from here on out. I think the biggest lesson I learned is that it's okay to throw out the rule book and that in fact we should throw out the rule book. Just because we've always done things a certain way doesn't mean that's the best way to do them. If you think your newsroom is ready to take the next step in producing social first videos, then you can check out our playbook of lessons and best practices at pointer.org slash bitspark. And you can check out the videos from 10 Tampa Bay linked below.